coming in fellowship, going on for, like I said, we got two people in the room and God knows all about it. Brother Terry, if you want to give thanks for the offering this morning. My gracious Heavenly Father, we bow before you. Thank you, Lord, for this one day life of grace. Without the opportunity to gather in the house today, we pray your blessing upon the service, the preaching. Bless our hearts and minds to receive and obey. And we thank you, thank you for this offering. It's being taken up and may it be used for the ability of your kingdom and your greater glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
10. Around uh, verse 12, it says, uh, So to yourselves in righteousness, read for mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it's time to seek the Lord. Yeah. We'll come and reign righteousness. The Bible begins with us. Amen. Yes, sir. And the uh, preacher has put confidence in the men he's called, and they've showed themselves to be faithful in what they do. Yes, sir. But they can deliver the mail. Yeah. We've got to receive it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And for my family to have revival, sometimes I've got to point the finger at me. Yeah. You ever watch people plow a field? The old days they get them piles out and every once in a while they get a rock or a stone. Yeah. Slow them down. They didn't take care of the problem. From that point on, you'll look, the roads look different. <laughs> you know? yeah. That's what happens in our lives. We can be going along and all of a sudden God will identify a problem. If we don't take care of it, we won't walk the same way anymore. Right. God help us. Amen. The Bible is for us. Yeah. Amen. 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 Sure. I used to think we had all the time we need. God bless you.
I'll tell you, Satan has been working in our house. I'll tell you, he's having a field day. That makes me realize one thing. He don't like what's going to happen. He can see things like you and me can't see. And he don't like it. There's something good going to happen from this revival. Just as surely as we're here, God is going to do some miracles. I'm glad I'm a part of it. I'm glad I got a God that no matter how down you would get. How far Satan can get you down. Your hope is not in him. It's beyond the human. I hope it's in God. <laughs> and he will take care of us children. He will answer our prayers and put us and let him and get on our knees and our face somewhere and call out to him. He will give revival. It's up to us. But we got to ask him and we got to mean it from the depths of our heart. I'm glad to be here today. Thank God. Really had a meeting and yeah, we we'll take it. I'm glad I just praise the Lord for what I can feel his goodness to us, although we get to a place where we wonder how God can even look at us anymore. We get so bitter sometimes in our spirit let Satan get us down and I'll tell you he can really give you trouble, but he ain't gonna win the battle. It's not Amen. Remember us when you pray. We really need your prayers. Amen. 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 I was thinking, Brother Terry was singing that song about plowing the field. We got a lot of farmland over where we live. A lot of corn fields and bean fields. And, um, if you ever drive out in the country, I drive a lot of back roads sometimes, Dave, and I'll see them. Tractors out there plowing the field. Yeah. When the tractors do the work, off in the distance, if you're away from them, you can see the evidence of what he's doing. Yeah. And you can see the dust from the field flying up. Amen. Yeah. As a Christian, as we're walking with the Lord, that's how our life should be. Yeah. There should be some evidence Amen. of our walk with God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And uh, you have your Bibles this morning. Turn with me to. Uh, Gospel of Luke, fourth chapter. God amazes me sometimes how it works. Sometimes the Lord will give you a thought, and if anybody's like me, you'll think to yourself. Say, Lord, you're crazy. I don't see what, where you're going with that. And you'll keep studying and pondering and praying. Then you get to church and still don't quite see it. And Brother Phil just hit the nail on the head in his testimony of our message this morning. And uh, God knows what he's doing, I know. Amen. And, uh, you prayed real hard and sweet for us this morning. Luke, Gospel of Luke, 4th chapter. I'm going to just read you two, two or three verses here in the 38th verse. It said, And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. And they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and minister unto them. Now when the sun was setting, and all they that had any sick with diverse disease brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And that's all we're going to read uh, this morning. You pray real sweet Thank for you. us, and we'll uh, just do our best to mind the Lord here. And uh, read a couple verses there in Luke about uh, Peter's mother. Well, I guess you could say Brother Terry. Bless you. And uh, God will, we're going to get into that here in just a few minutes, but uh, I got to thinking, uh, you know, yesterday we was out in the house, had some stuff going off, Tyler and him, and uh, constant hustle, hustle all day, and up to preparing for that day, if you know how it is, you're constantly busy doing this, doing that, doing this, and uh, we, we all have days like that in our daily prayers of life where uh, we, we feel like we just can't get no rest, amen, we're constantly going, 
whether it be something for our kids, our job, and the home, always running doing this, always running doing that, and uh, sometimes we'll say, if I could just have a break, just a few minutes, whatever, just to catch my breath, if you will, amen, uh, everything will be all right, and uh, I got to thinking a little bit, uh, you know, I said last Sunday morning about uh, uh, the disciples was with the Lord for three and a half years, basically, amen. He was their life coach to them for three and a half years. Wherever Brother Dave, wherever the Savior went, the disciples went. Amen. Wherever the Savior slept, they slept. Wherever he ate, they ate. Amen. Three and a half years, there they was with them. And I got to think a little bit about the life of Christ and his journey here up for three and a half years uh, of his public ministry that was. Uh, uh, amen. When he was walking around, and and you know what? And, and about every single day, there hardly wasn't a day goes by that a Christ wasn't busy, brother Dave, amen. doing something. Amen. Right. And you can go back to where, Amen. I guess in the beginning of the Gospels, Terry, uh, in the book of Matthew, I guess it may have started with uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Amen. And, amen. amen. Uh, Christ was on the uh, giving the Sermon on the Mount, there, if you will, and. Amen. Telling the people, amen. And uh, the Bible said when he came down off that mountain that he had an encounter with the leper, amen. And, amen. And uh, right in front of his face there, and wasn't a day goes by if he wasn't preaching, he was teaching. If he wasn't teaching, he was praying. If he wasn't praying, he was healing. If he wasn't healing, he was fasting, Brother Terry, uh, Brother Dave. But every day he was doing something. And that, uh, amen. And that day he came off the mountain top there. Oh, right? uh, yes, he did. And that leper came to him. Right? Amen. That leper looked at Christ. Right? And that leper said, Listen, Jesus, right? I know who you are. Right? If you'll just say the word, right? he said, I know I can be healed. Right? I never you know anything about leprosy. Right? And know anything about the old Bible. Right? My brother Dave, right? if you, right? amen, was a clean man, right? and I had leprosy, right? and I reached out and touched you, brother, right? guess what you was going to get? Right? You was going to get leprosy. Right? Oh, but ain't it amazing? Right? Oh, amen. Right? Oh, that man was standing right? in front of Christ. Right? Oh, amen. Right? And when he reached out to Jesus, right? oh, Jesus didn't get right? oh, leprosy. Right? But the leper, right? God, what right? Was he not? I said he was healed. I guess he was. They sell church. Amen. We need that type of faith. Amen. This morning. So every day that Jesus was doing something, he was doing something of public ministry. I guess he was. To help people. And then more people came. Terry, they'd hear about him. Amen. People would hear about what he was doing and they'd come to check it out. Amen. They came to receive something from him instead of give something to him most of the time. And here the loving Savior was. And then time and time again, he would give them exactly what they needed. Whether it was healing, no matter what it was, that's what Christ would do. Amen. That's the life that he lived. The Bible said at one spot, I believe to say the disciples asked him, were he planning on laying his head that night? He said, foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man hath no place. Do you know he had no earthly real estate down here, Dave? Oh, yeah. Amen. He was born in a barn. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And another feeding stable <laughs> where he was born at. <laughs> Amen. You know why he didn't have nothing down here? <laughs> he didn't plan on staying very long. <laughs> Amen. Abraham said, He said, I am a pilgrim and a stranger. In search of a city whose builder and maker is God. Amen. 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 I don't know about you this morning, church, but that's the same city I'm looking for. Amen. Whose builder and maker is God. Amen. So every single day, preacher, what's it got to do with verse you read? We'll get to that. Every day, Christ was doing something. Amen. Every day, Terry. Every day. Then he was journeying on down through there. Bible said he came into counter with a Roman centurion. Amen. You remember that? Amen. Amen. Now the thing I like about the Gospels, if you go read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you may read something in Matthew that's left out in Mark. Amen. You may read something in Mark that's left out in John. 
You may read something than John that you'll not find in the book of Luke. But the thing about the Gospels are, when you take all four of the Gospels and you lay them all four of them over top of each other, each Gospel will fill in a gap that the other one might have left something out of it. So the Bible said they had an encounter with a Roman centurion. Amen. This centurion came. Amen. Got Jesus' attention. He said, listen. He said, my servant that I think a lot of is sick. He said, would you come, amen, to my house, amen, and heal this servant, amen. You know what Jesus said? He didn't say, let me check my schedule. He said, yeah, I'll come. You know why Jesus said that day? Because Jesus, even though it's 2017, still awake, house calls this morning. He's the best doctor that you'll ever find. He said, would you come to my house? He said, I sure will. Listen. One gospel says that he sent servants to Jesus and they journeyed to the centurion's house. The other gospel says that the centurion walked with the Lord to the house. Amen. And I thought about this this past week when I was reading this scripture. As they were journeying to the centurion's house. Amen. That Roman centurion stopped and he stopped Jesus and said, wait a minute. Hang on just a second. He said, me and you've got all something in common. He said, because I'm a man of great authority yeah. just as you are. Yeah. Amen. He said, I tell people to go, they go. Yeah. I tell them to come, they come. I tell them to jump, they say how high in the words. Amen. He said, so Lord, why don't you just speak the words? Amen. Amen. That my servant would be healed. Amen. There, there ain't no sense. You have to come all the way Amen. to my house. Now let's time out for a minute. Listen. Amen. The only reason I do that, for those of you that don't understand why I do that, a lot of preachers will preach. They'll go on 12 different rabbit trails. They'll never get back to where they started from. And then you'll leave scratching your head. What was that preacher preaching about? Amen. 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 So I don't want you to lose track of where we're at. I thought about this the other day, and the Bible does not say this. But I thought this thought came to me. I wonder maybe a part of that centurion's thought process when he stopped the Savior and didn't want him to come to his house. He said, I'm not worthy. That's what he told him. Yeah. I'm not worthy if you come to my house. Amen. 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 But I, I thought about this, and this was just my thought process. When the Lord showed me this. I wondered, and I know I'm going to get a lot of old me's on this statement. But I wondered if Christ came knocking on our doors and knocked on our doors and we opened the door up, where we shut the door up and say, How is Jesus? Amen. What do we got to hide from him? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. Yeah. What do we got hidden in our dressing drawers that we didn't want Jesus to know about? What do we got hidden in the refrigerator? Amen. That we might be a little ashamed of. What do we got hidden that we don't want him to see about? Amen. 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 I think most of us would be like that. Amen. 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 Hey Lord, I don't want you to come in. Lord, I got I got some dirty magazines I don't want you to see. Amen. Lord, I don't I don't a glass of water, but if I open the refrigerator up, you may see the few bottles have a Bud Light hiding back here. Lord, I only drink on occasion. It's good for my heart. Amen. 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 That, that ain't crazy to God. Amen. Now I say this, Paul said a little wine is good for your belly, right? That's what the scripture said, did he not? That's what the scripture said. But I'm going to tell you this this morning as your pastor. Amen. I'm going to tell you this, a lot of people will say, and a lot of doctors will tell you that a little wine is good for your heart. Amen. But I got news for your doctors. A little heart repent and a little heart bread, and God will take care of that problem for you. You won't need none of that filthy stuff. Amen. Come on, brother. <laughs> he didn't want him to come to his house. I wonder 
I wonder what's in our house that we're ashamed of. Amen. I'm going to tell you something the way I believe, the way I live. If I was a sinner, amen, and I met Brother Johnson and I came into his house knowing that he was a Christian, knowing that he was a man of God, I wouldn't dare say a filthy word under his roof. Out of pure respect. Amen. 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 I just worked here. I ain't just worried that it is. Right. Amen. Amen. What's in our house? Yeah. What's in our house? Amen. Amen. That we're ashamed of. I'm going to tell you something now, church. Amen. We're fixing to go into that. That's what we're fixing to go into. Amen. Matthew. Amen. When you when you's overseas and they tell you he's going into battle. Amen. That army sergeant didn't just throw you a red rider or beat the gun. And say, here son, I hold the best for you. He give you everything that you knew you would need to take the enemy on. We got to clean ourselves up and get the filth out of our homes today. Oh, Amen. Amen. In order for God to be pleased with us. Amen. 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 We're fixing to go into revival. Let me stop here and I'm going to get back to where I started. You remember when Joshua had got out there and Joshua and them had told everybody to clean the camp up. Clean it up. And he sent some men over to, to fight the enemy over there. Amen. Amen. And that enemy whooped up on old Joshua. Oh, yes, they did. Yeah. They had just a few men, and Joshua and had a big number of army. Amen. Amen. And it made Joshua so mad that he couldn't understand what had happened. The Bible said, I think he even ran his clothes, he got sang. Amen. And Joshua was sitting there, and it word got to Joshua that he found out what the problem was. Amen. Amen. And he went to awake. He said, hey, can let's have a talk. He said, I, today would I tell you to clean your hearts up and get everything out of here that we weren't supposed to have. He said, yeah, but, and I'm paraphrasing. They can say, listen, say, I know you said that, but there are some few garments that I thought was real nice. And a little bit of silver, I believe it was, Terry. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. He said, Lord, all I've done was picked it up. I just hid it under my tent a little bit. Nobody would know about it. Amen. It ain't going to hurt nobody. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. Your sin will cost you more than you ever thought about it. Amen. Amen. It will cost you. It will cost them closest to you. Yeah. And it will affect everybody around you. Amen. 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 If sin is in the camp, if sin is in the camp, Amen. You could be responsible for being a hindrance to this revival. Amen. Amen. You can like that. You can amen it. You can obey it. You can disagree with it. You're the truth. But your sin, my sin, could be the very thing that hinders that lost soul from coming to Christ. Amen. Amen. Achan was took out. Him and his whole family stoned and burned to death. Or is they not? Yes, That's exactly what happened to them. Amen. Because of one man's sin. Amen. Time in, let's get back. That Roman centurion, he said, Lord, I know that you can just speak the word. You're a lot like me. We have great authority. He said, all right. Jesus stood there for a minute and listened to this man. You know what Christ said? He looked at all the people that was around me, Buck, and he marveled. He said, I can't believe it. Never have I ever seen a faith in all of Israel like this man has to me. Amen. He told that centurion to go home. Go home. That centurion turned him back home. And I believe when he walked in the door, I believe the old servant might have been up cleaning the house. Amen. Why was that preacher? Because all Christ had to do was speak the word. Amen. That man was healed that very day. Amen. 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 Never a faith like this have I ever seen. Have I ever seen? What kind of faith do we have this week? What kind of faith? Amen. Let's get to the scripture where we're at. Here Christ was, the scripture says, in the synagogue. Amen. He was in church. Right? 
You know it's going to be a good time in church when Christ shows up. Yeah. Amen. If we come to church every service, service after service, and we sit there sitting on our hands like an eye on a log, we're going to leave the same service we was when we got here. Amen. But when Christ makes His appearance, Amen, something's about to happen. Amen. 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 Something's about to happen. So here Christ was preaching, teaching, whatever He was doing in the synagogue, in the church house. Amen. The Bible says there was a man there with an unclean spirit. Amen. 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 That's what the scripture said. Amen. There was a man in the church house, in other words, that's what the synagogue was, right? Yes. A man in the church house with an unclean spirit. In other words, a man sitting in the pew with an unclean spirit. Now here Peter was that had a mother-in-law with a great fever, the scripture says. That tells me it just didn't come on to her, Terry. Apparently she'd had it for some time. It was a great fever, amen? amen. A great fever. But Peter, Lord have mercy, Peter had a fever in his own house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But Peter still got up and came to God's house. Let that one sink in for a minute. How many times, church? How many times? Do we have a fever in our own home? And we stay away from the church house. Lord. And I'm not talking about sticking a the thermometer in your mouth and pulling it out in 101 degrees. That ain't the fever I'm necessarily talking about. Fever comes in all shapes and giant sizes this morning. Amen. Preacher, I've come to church. But I can't get my wife or my husband. They're on their way to hell and I can't get them to move. Amen. Then Satan has done the fetus. Lord, we come to church, but we've got an alcohol problem in our home. We've got a drug addiction in our home. Amen. We've got a fornication problem in our home. Amen. We've got this type of addiction in our home. Amen, preacher. Just can't get it right, preacher. We got a fever in our home. The devil wants you to stay at home. He don't want you to come to church like Peter did with the sick mother-in-law. Because the devil knows when you come to church, especially when Christ is there, something's going to happen in life. Satan does not like that. Come on, brother. Amen. So here Peter was. Bless him. Now I'm sure some of you are sitting back here. Bless him. Like Sister Bertha better than everybody else. So now I've got no fever in my house. My house is great. Everything is hunky dory in my home. Let me tell you something. If people live in your house, you got fever there. Yeah. One way, shape, and form or another, there's a people there. Because yeah. you know why people are going to be people. Yeah. People are people. So here Peter was. Sat there, there's an unclean man in the church house. Amen. Dave, why did you go to the hospital? I've never seen a person feeling great and absolutely healthy. He said, you know what? I'm feeling bored today. I'm going to go to Mercy Hospital, check myself in just to see what happens. I've never heard that of you. The hospital is for who? Sick, Sick folks. Amen? Yep. And when you're in the hospital, if you've got a heart condition, whatever it is, they'll do surgery on you and give you medication. Amen? After a day or two, you should be showing signs of improvement. Amen? Amen? And if you don't take your medicine, if you leave, if they discharge you, you're getting better, the doctor says. Here's your antibiotic. Take it twice a day for two weeks. If you go home and do not take an antibiotic, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. That'll wind you back up in the same shape you was. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But if you'll take the medicine, 90% of the time, chances are you get better. That's right. You know what a church house is? It's just like hospital. Yeah. 
It's a place for sick people. It's a place for imperfect people. It's a place where fornicators can walk in them back doors and have a seat. Amen. 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 It's a place where homosexual can walk in the back doors, sit down, Amen. and have a right change. Amen. It's a hospital for sinners. Yes. Amen. 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 And I'll just say this, some of the Christians I've seen, they need to go get a renewal of their medication because it's about to run out on them. Amen. 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 It's a hospital for sick people. Amen. So here was an unclean man sitting in the church house. Amen. And the Bible says, Jesus said, come out of him, devil. The Bible said that they fell to the ground and tore at him is what it had. Amen. He was fighting. In other words, what the scripture says there, right? You know why that was? People will tell you, the atheists will tell you, and those that don't believe in God and His miraculous power will say that was because Christ didn't really have the power that He had. No, that's not true. You know why the problem was? Because when you allow Satan to grab hold of you, amen, sometimes things in our life have to get worse before they get better. And you know why that is? Because Satan's got such a grip on folks that he knows when Christ is in the presence, He's done lost. And he don't stand a chance. So the devil is grabbing, trying to pull everything he can because he knows he's going to lose. Amen. Amen. It's just how the devil works. But the devil can not stand up to Almighty God. If you don't believe that, go back and read what happened to him on the mountain. When Satan tried to get to Christ to bow down to him. Amen. What an unclean man in the church house. Amen. An unclean man in the church house. People today will stick their nose up in the air saying, I can't believe that person's here. Yes, I can't believe that. Amen, brother. Where else are they going to go? Amen. Where else are they going to go? Amen. Amen. How many times have you heard somebody say, somebody leave the church because Brother Terry talked rudely to them and didn't like him? Brother Terry didn't shake their hands. I've had people get mad at me in years past in other churches that I pastored got mad at me because I had to walk back here and shake their hands. That's people are going to be people. Yeah. If we stay focused on people, yeah. Satan's going to grab hold of us. Yeah. Amen. He's going to grab hold of us. If I looked around, you ain't got to look very far to see my heart. So if you can, let me take this whole bottle. I'm with this one. I might as well go this one. If your pastor wants to follow you home today, you come in and sit down in your living room or sit down at the kitchen table, would everything be all right? Come on, brother. Come on. Would everything be all right? What would you have to say? Preacher, hang on a minute before you get in the house. I've got a few dishes I need to put up. You want to go hide that money to lose? Hide them dirty money. You think I'm getting money? Well, this is true. Amen, brother. Amen. Too focused on people. We come to church, we worry about this brother, this sister, this brother, what this person's going to do and what not going to do. Amen. What day do I took this bottle of water? If I sat here and I told you everything about it, everybody, if I told you every imperfection that I know everybody has, including myself, and I told you about it, and I said, Brother Dave, grab this bottle of water. And all I want you to do, I want you to walk around this church three times. And you can't spill one drop of that water. Amen. You want to walk around this church, what are your eyes and your focus going to be on? You're not leaving that water. Why? There ain't no spill. Now, when you're walking around holding that water, did you notice anybody's imperfections in the church? Why not? Because he's focused on his own. Right? We'd be a whole lot better off if we worry about this right here. Amen. Get our own house cleaned up. Amen. Amen. 
told somebody one time that came to me with some false accusations, I said, I'll tell you what, you better get your own house cleaned up when you come digging in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Why you out judging somebody else's skeleton is about like your own closet. Amen. An unclean land in church house. Yeah. Peter came to him and he said, he said Lord, come home with me. The Lord said, all right. The Lord went home with Peter that day. And he got there and he seen that his mother-in-law was very sick with great Peter. The Bible does not say that Jesus rebuked her. The Bible does not say that Jesus rebuked Peter. The Bible says that he had a top of her before he did. He spoke the words, and you don't have it. He was mother, I was healed. Just like that, sir. Amen. Just like that. Preacher, what's the point? Peter had a fever in his own house. You with me? But Peter didn't let that fever stop him from coming to God's house. Right? You with me? Yes, right. He didn't let it stop him. He still came. How many times do we sit back and we let things hinder us from coming to God's house? Amen. Amen. You know what power God's got this morning, church? Do you remember when they came to him to arrest him? And they came to him and they didn't succeed? Yep. And they came back and they were shaking their heads and they said, what's the problem? They said, never have we ever seen a man speak like this. <laughs> We've never seen a man speak like this. They marveled at him. They, they marveled at his power. Have. Church, I'm going to tell you something. Amen. God still got that power. Yes, amen. amen. For those of you that don't know and don't remember that she may not have told, last Sunday night, Sister Dixon was here and had a problem with her arm. Amen. Couldn't move her, couldn't hardly move her arm. Couldn't move back this way, couldn't move back way. Said she's fixing to go to the doctor. And there, didn't get her. Amen. Yeah. When we closed church, Brother Dave said, he said, if the church don't mind, let's pray over it. Amen. So we did. It was either Monday or Tuesday. I believe it was Tuesday. Or was it Monday? Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. Got a text. Me and Heather. She said, yesterday I couldn't even move my arm left to my right. But she said, today I can move it all the way up. I can move it all the way to the back seat. I can move it all the way around. And she said, I feel a whole lot better. And when people say, that's the church of Africa. She said, it felt so good she didn't even need to take no more medicine. Preach a while was that. Because God moved on her behalf. Amen. 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 The Bible says, when somebody said to you, Bring the elders of the church together and anoint them with oil. And lay hands on the sick. There's what the scripture says in Isaiah. And they shall recover. That's what the scripture says. Amen. Scripture does not say that when you lay hands on them and anoint them with oil and you pray that prayer of faith that they're going to be healed like that. Ain't what the scripture says. It says they shall recover. Right? Right. So it may take a day or two. Amen. But it ain't God. It ain't God slowing down. It ain't Him getting all slow on His game. Amen. Amen. It's the manifestation of God's work through that. Amen. Exactly right. Amen. But they shall recover. Yes, God still got power this morning, church. Amen. Twenty seventeen. I know it's foolish to the world, but He still got power. And I close with this. Oh Peter, oh Peter, Lord. with a fever in His own house. But he still came to God's house. Yes. He didn't let that slow him down. Amen. If that had been me or you, Dave, we would have sat home. Amen. Church house is a place for imperfect people. Yes. If you're looking for a perfect church, you might as well stay at home. Because yeah. you will never find one. Yeah. Never will. It's a place for sick people. Amen. It's a place for sick people to get made good. Amen. Peter knew what he needed. Yes. Peter knew that if he could get Christ to come home with him, that Christ could take care of the problem. <coughs> you know what the problem is in our homes, in our lives? We don't want to take him home with us. 
We're content with the devil being where he's at. Taking up residence in our house. Amen. You know what it's time to do, church? It's time to get the devil in this house. Amen. It's time to say, oh devil, you've bothered us long enough. Amen. Amen. Get out. Kick your bags out. Get out. Amen. And say, Lord, I apologize. Come on in. That's what we need to do, church. Yes, See, Dave, when I leave church Sunday night, I don't leave God here. Yeah. I take you with me when I go home. Yeah. And when I get up Monday morning, Tuesday, and go to work, pack my bag, fire old truck up, and take off south, I don't leave him here in the road. You know why? You know why I take God with me? Amen. And every time before I pull out down the street, me and God have us a talk. And I have prayer. Why is that? Because I may encounter something between here and where I'm going that I cannot handle. Amen. Amen. I take Him with me. Amen. And I bring Him back with me. See what most people do? Come to church for two hours. Sing amazing grace, raise their hands, say amen, hallelujah, preacher. Then 12.30, 12.45 comes, they leave him in the pew. Amen. And they walk out the door with that. And they go home with that. Did you know, I'll close with this, I promise. People think that the church is the only place we can worship God. We don't have to have church pews to worship the Lord. We don't have to have stained glass to worship God. We don't even have to have a piano. The worst of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. So when you take the devil out, because you got a big fever in your home, and you welcome God back in where he belongs, and the next time you stand there doing dishes, and God comes along and just stand there next to you, he pays your visit. So I just want to see how you are today. Yeah. He's done that to me, Dave. Amen. Yeah. When God comes on the scene, it's all right in your own house. To worship and glory to God. You say, preacher, it's all right to shout in my house. Amen. It is. Amen. Paul made house calls. He preached the gospel in homes. Amen. Christ made house calls. When Paul preached, I believe in my whole heart. There may be some old saints of God there, Terry Preston. They started to rejoice in them a little bit. They even had altar calls, I believe. Amen. And somebody could come and give our heart to Christ. See, this is just a place where we gather. And do not take that out of context of what I just said. We should gather every time the doors are open and God's house. Amen. Amen. But we can worship God in work. Amen. If it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hey man, I drove down the road in many of days, having a time with me and God. Amen. And when I came to my senses, I I wondered how I made it from there to here. And I'll tell you how I made it. It's because I put it on autopilot and God took over. And God watched over. Amen. Amen. We can be in the cornfield and have a blast with God. Amen. As long as He's there. Amen. I bet maybe some of Peter's motivation that day to go to church because he heard Christ was going to be there. And he said, I don't want to miss it. Because something may happen and I know I've got this fever at my house, and if there's anybody that can get that fever out, it's Christ. Amen. Amen. So he went to the church house, seen God move in a mighty way, get an unclean devil out of a man, and said, You're coming home with me. Come on, let's go. He brought him home with him. Amen. Amen. We need to kick the devil out of our house. We need to put God back where he belongs. Amen. Amen. See, God can still do this stuff, church. Yes. God can still do it if we have faith. I'm looking for God to bless this week. Amen. My way. Yes. I'm looking for him to save some lost this week. And I encourage you. I told you Sunday night, and I'll say it again for those of you that weren't here. I encourage you these next few days, not for me, but for the Lord's sake. Not just for the Lord's sake, but for the lost sake. Yeah. You take a few minutes out of your day. We spend so much time sitting there. Did you know that if I took my phone, I can press a button and I can tell you how much time has been spent on my phone. It'll tell you the hours, the minutes, the seconds. I can tell you that. 
It ain't nothing for us to sit down and play on our phone for an hour or two during the day. Amen. I encourage you all to take just a few minutes these next few days. Yes. By yourself, just you and God are heaping better with your family. And get down and pray and say, God, listen, we're going into revival and you know what we need. Father, yeah. I'm asking you to send what we need. And Father, we're asking you to move in a mighty way to send that old-fashioned convicting yeah. power from God. Yeah. Send it down to us to convict the hearts of them that are lost. Yeah. And church, let me tell you, let me forewarn you, when you ask God for something, and that's in His will, and that's His will. The Bible said, for whosoever will, call on the name of the Lord. He what? He shall be saved. So that tells me that prayer right there is God's will. You with me? You agree with that? Amen. I didn't say pray for the Cadillac. I said pray for God's will for the lost to be saved. If we'll do that, God will hear our prayers. And God will answer. But God can't answer not because he's not powerful enough. But God will not come into your home where he's not welcome. The old saying, this place ain't big enough for the both of us. You've heard that? The old saying, there's a new sheriff in town. Amen. You need to keep the old devil to the curb or take him out to the trash where he belongs. Amen. Yeah. Say, he ain't welcome here, no more devil. Amen. Say, well, come on in. Amen. Amen. We'll do that. We'll get the fever out of the house. Yes, yes. Like Peter did. Stand your feet tired and get your song.